Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael's. We are, as always, glad to be together today. We look forward to sharing this worship, to sharing fellowship afterwards together, even if you can only come for a few minutes. This is part of what makes the community feel like the community. So I encourage you to do that. The instructions will be on, on the screen and uh, in your bulletins and on our website. Please sing with gusto, pray with your full heart, and know that we are family, even in so many different sacred spaces. Welcome. or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Blessed be the one holy and living God and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect for Martin Luther King, Jr. Almighty God, by the hand of Moses, your servant, you led your people out of slavery and made them free at last. Grant that your church, following the example of your prophet, Martin Luther King, 
may resist oppression in the name of your love and may strive to secure for all your children the blessed liberty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am and ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am where you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together a portion of Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb, all of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Ah. Uh...
Jesus Christ, who brings us grace and truth. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, he said of him, there is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of Christ who calls us to follow. Amen. There are two songs, hymns in our liturgy today. One we just sang on our way in, and the other we will sing on our way out. And both songs hook me because their questions beg us to answer. The first has the Lord asking, will you come and follow me if I but call your name? And then it continues to ask if we will do so in all of the challenging times and places. At our service's end, the Lord speaks in the song of hearing the people's needs and asks, whom shall I send? And we sing the refrain and answer, and also another question, here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? Have you ever answered this in your own head, in your own thoughts? Have you ever felt that spiritual tug as these words of God's call are sung on one's lips? Notice today, at the end of our service, your own internal response as we sing our way out from worship and into God's service this morning. Both of our readings are also about the Lord's call to individuals. First, the Lord God calls Samuel, a child who doesn't understand until Eli explains it, instructing him to answer, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. In our gospel, Jesus first calls Philip and then Nathaniel, who makes kind of a flippant comment about nothing good coming out of Nazareth, and then recognizes Jesus as the son of God as they begin to talk. What's curious to me is that neither Samuel, Philip, or Nathaniel are ever asked the question. They're told, commanded even. Samuel, God calls, follow me, Jesus tells them. 
And yet in spite of scripture's enunciation of these directive calls, we have this idea that God's call is somehow very much optional, a question, and that we'd better make sure it was really you or me that God meant, not someone else behind us. Is it I, Lord? Do we make it a question because we're afraid it is us? or because we're worried it isn't. Spoiler alert, it is us. Tomorrow, we honor the life and work of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Each year we start early on Sunday morning. We look back at his famous speeches, sermons, books, and letters and wonder how we still struggle with inequality and racism. We recall his acts of peaceful protest, powerful marches, bus trips, and more. His seeking equality and integrity through action. I feel buoyed by his beautiful words and insight while also saddened by rampant racism and white supremacy still alive and kicking these 50 years after his assassination. And this year is horribly painful because it seems we're going backwards to an extent. This morning, we are sandwiched between the event of a mob, largely white supremacists, angry other extremists and protesters who, got, who were swept up, who attacked the US Capitol, who felt called to do so intending bodily harm just 10 days ago. And now we have widespread threats promising to do more of the same this Wednesday at the inauguration and on different capitals, all the capitals around the country. And yesterday, Bishop Gregg sent us, messaged the clergy to be aware there are active threats being made on poor progressive or more diverse churches, in addition to those state capitol buildings. And beginning today, I'm glad to say we arrived this morning with no evidence of that, but we have taken some precautions. Into all this, we consider God's call and our own responses. Follow me. Follow the way, the truth, and the life. To have been trying to do just that, to act with justice, love, truth, makes it that much worse to see some of those steps forward shoved back before our eyes. Doors we hoped were behind us being broken back open. We wonder, how can we still fail to recognize the humanity of all God's children? to love our neighbors, including those who are different from us in whatever way, loving them as ourselves. Difference is more than skin deep, more than language, nationality, gender identity. We are seeing it also between middle America and the coastal states, between North and South, poverty, and security and more. All of this makes it time to listen and act in hope. Even now, especially now, God is calling forth hope and we need to hear it. One such hopeful listener is poet Amanda Gorman. She writes, in this village, we make the globe a little smaller so we can dream bigger. So the dream need not wait. Here in this gathering, we do good so that the world might be great. In our closing hymn, the Lord asks, whom shall I send? Amanda Gorman is a voice answering God's call eloquently and passionately. She is the very first National Youth Poet Laureate. 
born some 30 years after Martin Luther King was assassinated, she speaks of the impact of him, his witness, his ministry, and other great orators on her work, how they helped her find the courage to speak in public, a terrifying prospect for Gorman who deals with a speech impediment. Before every performance, she says she recites a kind of mantra to, to gather herself. I am the daughter of black writers who are descended from freedom fighters, who broke the chains, who changed the world. They call me. It will come as no surprise to you that Ms. Gorman has been invited to write and deliver a poem at President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris's inauguration next week. She was in the middle of writing this poem, a daunting task, when she watched in horror the deadly siege on the US Capitol. Now it typically takes her days to craft a new poem, but it was like someone pressed the on switch on my brain, Gorman said. I finished the rest at home that very night. She looks ahead and sees a new chapter in America, which we so desperately need, one of dignity and integrity and hope and unity. That is her response to call. We are caught between violent and hate-fueled events, which continue to engender alarming threats in every state. And we need to grieve this, grieve what it costs us, grieve what this shows us, what it does to our country, our community, our, us as individuals. Because only what is faced can be changed. I'm not talking about being optimistic or happy or sad, I'm saying, much as we want a break from seeing so much anger and destruction, fear, outrage, we need to look at it. We need to listen and face it, whether we're protesters or those whom protesters oppose. This reflection, this grief work is necessary if we have any hope of ever changing it. People need to be accountable and ourselves included then we can act as people of hope do, building the kingdom of God. Faithful compassion, adaptability, determination, creativity are some of how we know the spirit is lifting us up in that work. One can feel immobile or overwhelmed at times, but for people of resurrection faith, that never gets the last word. We are people of hope who for example, sadly couldn't sing together and play along that Messiah tradition. And yet a month ago, you raised over $3,700 for Issaquah Community Services. That's 30% more, above 30% more than last year. With the spirit of God, we're people of hope. Helping the Issaquah Community Preschool, the Tavon Learning Center, to make it through almost a year of being unable to meet in person or meet at all. The Holy Spirit breathes in us as we check in and care for each other, embracing each other beyond what any social distance can impede. One who answered the Lord's call with his life and his death famously told us, Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Now, some 60 years later, Amanda Gorman is a spiritual heir to King and a visionary herself. And she says, Americans know one another by our love of liberty, when in fact, we are liberated by our love for one another. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith together as we offer the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things came into being through him. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. In the light of God's word, let us pray. God of our salvation, hope of the world, we pray, let your word go forth and give light. That the world may know Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace, we pray, let your word go forth and give light. That all who are alienated and without hope may be brought near at Christ's table, we pray. Let your word go forth and give light. That the church may be one in serving and proclaiming the gospel, we pray. Let your word go forth and give light. That we may be bold to speak truth and stretch out our hands to save. We pray, let your word go forth and give light. That the church may be generous in giving, faithful in serving, bold in proclaiming, we pray. Let your word go forth and give light. That the church may welcome and support all whom God calls in faith, we pray. Let your word go forth and give light. That the day comes when the love of God unites all people, we pray. Let your word go forth and give light. That we may offer thanks for effective vaccines in this time of pandemic increase, for those serving this week, Carol, Anita, Kathy, Jason, Father Richard, and Catherine, and life's many blessings, that all who work in healthcare may be sheltered in the shadow of your wings, and those who suffer from anxiety, depression, isolation, and loneliness may know the comfort of your love, that Karen, Anna, Chris, Graham, Alexandra, Peter and Marianne, Mary, Vicki, Colt, Nancy, Kelly, Craig, Aaron, Ruth, Richard, Chris and Alex, Kelsey, Luke, Eli and Caleb, and those who are sick in mind, body or spirit may know your healing power and that Brian, Kathy, 
Lisa and David, and those who have died may dwell in your eternal light, we pray. Let your word go forth and give light. Most loving God, whose will it is for us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing, and to cast all our cares on you. Keep us faithful and preserve us from worldly anxieties, that darkness cannot hide the light of your eternal love, which you have manifested in the word made flesh. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With humble and contrite hearts, let us confess our sins to God. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, forgive our sins and have mercy upon us. That with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Greet one another in God's peace with love, with joy, and with hope. Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's. I'm Carol Swig as your best free person of the day. There are our announcements at the end of the leaflet today, but I'll go over some of them with you. There are a number of opportunities for you to participate in the life of St. Michael's throughout the week and the year. Especially during the week, there's the midday prayer on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and you can go to the website and join the link and download the bulletin. This is a wonderful few minutes of the day to take a break, call to mind all that we're thankful for, but to pray for those in need in our parish. On Wednesday evening at seven o'clock, there's a evening prayer service. There's Mother Catherine reads a short scripture passage about healing and peace. And there are hymns of uh, just simple chants and prayers for healing for all. Um, if you're so inclined, you're welcome to join the choir. Just be in touch with Jason Anderson through the church. And also, if you have any prayer requests, mother, reach out to Mother Catherine and she will add them to the list that go to the weekday prayer chain group too. And not only on Sunday, but we're, you're prayed for throughout the week. Um, also, the, to grace our altar and bring joy to all who visit the church on Zoom on Sundays, please donate to the flower altar flowers. You can go on the website and sign up or call Julie at the office about that. Um, 
The other thing, the annual meeting is coming up. The vestry will set a date for that and will be a virtual meeting this year also. And finally, join us for the social coffee hour afterwards. It's a wonderful way to connect with parishioners and see friends and make new friends. So hope to see you at the coffee hour. Thank you so much, Carol. Much to give thanks for. Before we honor and pray for those with birthdays or anniversaries, we have more good news to celebrate. Bishop Greg has invited us to consider having an intern at St. Michael. Anita's here behind the camera going, yeah, as am I. I am very excited. This is a wonderful person and I think a good fit for St. Michael's. Uh, the intern's time will be just about a year, give or take. And because her own community has not yet learned of this change and where she's going, we're going to hold off until the Wednesday mic to introduce her. And it will be our pleasure to welcome her in all sorts of ways. She's going to try her skills in a lot of different areas of the church and learn what she can soak up. So we get to be like a teaching hospital for this woman as she prepares and continues to discern a call to priesthood. And the vestry was also delighted and affirming of this opportunity. Today we pray for the birthday of Javier Galdo, Julia Miracle, Richard Fazio, Samuel Lynn, and Gail Aplana. Together we pray Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God bless you in this new year of life and love and faith and this time of your anniversary of birth. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received.
the offerings of your people as they come to your table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, holy God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take. Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, holy God, we remember his death 
We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all. Presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to the heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, given for you, for our redemption.
Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. The Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deep sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.